Allie, thank you. And um, uh, for all the folks that put this thing together, it's always sort of amazing that um, I think I've told y'all before, I remember one time making a smart comment trying to be funny, uh, 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 some guy that were putting together some uh, men's conference out in West Texas. And I, I made some remark about, you know, them getting the coffee made earlier or something. I don't remember what it was, but I remember that guy looking at me and saying, Myers, you know, I think maybe you could do this next year. And I just went, no problem, dude, no problem. I never worked so hard in my whole life for a year. I just like, I was comatose half the time, a little toothpicks in my eyes, holding my eyelids up. I, I was just, this is the hardest I've worked. Um, Ali, I don't know how you do it. It must be, I don't know, steroids or something. I don't know how you do it, dude. It, it, it was just a lot of work to, to, uh, to do that stuff. Ali, I, I wish I sponsored you. Uh, just, I wish I sponsored you so I could tell everybody that I sponsored you. <laughs> it just that would be so much fun yes I, I sponsor that guy yeah um pretty special listen for the for y'all that i haven't met my name is myers raymer i'm a very grateful recovered alcoholic from dallas texas took my last drink january 15th 88 and um um and it's been some it's been some fun i'll tell you it it's a treat seeing so many on here that i do know um and it's um it's an honor. It's all I can say. It's just, it's just an honor to be here. Um, the, uh, this, this step 11 stuff, I got, I got 40 minutes and, and I, I, I won't, uh, you know, over the years, there's been a, a couple of ways to run at this. Um, I could go to the beginning of step 11 and just kind of work down through the step. I could do that, but I, I just, I tend to, um, Maybe it's because we've come through this crazy year. Um, can y'all hear me okay now? It's saying that my internet's a little unstable. Let me, I'll, maybe I talk slower. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, you're good. You're good. Okay. The, um, I think that um, through this whole year, I've, I've had a lot of time to talk about and think about the bigger picture of our recovery as a fellowship. Um, what's the motivation for doing this? What's, why do we do that? Why do we, and, and it, it, it makes sense to do that because sometimes folks, I, I think that sometimes we kind of lose sight of, of the bigger picture. Let me give you a great example. Um, I was talking to a guy the other day that I've just started sponsoring. He's been in the rooms um, 22 years, I think. Um, and he's, has no 11th step program at all. No, that component is not really there. It's very superficial. And he has no uh, um, idea about working with other people, step 12. They're just sort of steps at the end of the steps. And, and 22 years into the deal, he just doesn't see any reason to do it. God, listen, if this just happened that one time, I'd go, he's an anomaly and we'll just, it's no big deal. The problem is, is that I've sponsored hundreds of men over the years that are in exactly the same kind of situation. Guys sober 25, 30 years, and they've sponsored maybe one guy or two guy, and uh, they have their, their, their powder dry. We've all heard it. How many of y'all have sat in meetings, in AA meetings, and somebody will introduce himself like this? They'll go, hi, my name is Stan, and I'm sober today. Thank you for the hope, Stan. I, I don't know why, I hope there's no Stans in here tonight. I didn't pick you specifically. I just used the name. It, it, there is a, um, in the words of, of Mark Houston years ago, I smell more. Um, and so real quick, let me make sure that you're clear. I didn't end up on some spiritual mountaintop and that's where I'm addressing you from. Um, I, I, I came into these rooms, um, uh, fell flat on my butt, spiritually i stayed sober one day at a time i had no real program and i had no real um meaning to what it was that i was doing i was just showing up at six meetings a week going to a bunch of those things talking a bunch of aa crap and i didn't seven years into the deal guys i still don't know who the co-founders of alcoholics anonymous were that's how how removed i was from the program the, the problem with this is, um, is that I see a sea of men and women 
who settle for so much less than we were intended to settle for. I, I think it's the it's the sixty four thousand dollar question that that begs to be asked, um, and 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 I think that we should talk about it some. Um, this idea is is going to meetings and staying sober one day at a time enough. If it is, rock on. As a crusty old Texan, though, I'm just kind of hoping that that's not what you're teaching. Because if that's what you're teaching, then you're, you're selling this idea that perhaps there's no more than just being sober. And, and uh, in the words of my friend Mickey Bush, so's the cat. Guys, I love the fact I, I love the fact that we're sober. I, I totally love the fact that we're here and that, and that we're sober. I, I just there was a period of time in there when I recognized that my life was getting a bit weird, and um, I don't have time to get into any story stuff because I've got so much other stuff I want to talk about. And so, uh, mercifully, we'll skip all that crap. But I I, I want you to to know that. Um, I'm sitting there in the morning, getting up, looking in the mirror, and I'm going, Myers, you're six years sober. Um, and um, why is it that the depression is coming back? Why is it that you you are having suicidal thoughts that you never had before when you were out there drinking and, and acting a fool? There's there's so much stuff that's not the way it's supposed to be. Um, a lot of you guys and, and gals know my wife, and and she was she was not she was not too thrilled with, with, with Myers. I, I didn't, I wasn't bringing much to the table. Um, um, the, my, my daughter, we had another daughter after I got sober and then another daughter, I've got three daughters now. And, and one of them's in the program in, in the, in the room here tonight with me and um, um, my son-in-law and I, I'll just bust their anonymity. That's what I do best. Um, and the, um, but here's the, but here's the point. I think that each one of us, it's a common thread that runs through through Lars and 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 Larry and 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 Yale. It, it runs through every one of us. The common thread is that at some point in time we ought to start asking, are we okay with where we are? And if we are groovy, that's great. But what if we're not? But what if we're not? Because because here's the question: if we're not, then what do we do? Well, the mainstream AA thing is we go to some more meetings. You just need to get your butt in some more meetings and you're going to be okay. Well, okay. I got, I've got no truck with that. It didn't work with me, but, but um, the, um, maybe there's more. Um, I was at a conference one time. Mark Houston was there and Chris was there and there were some other folks. There's about 270 men in this room. And, um, and I'd gotten up that morning, we were staying in these big cabins and I was just got up that morning and there was a bunch of guys out there praying. And I don't know why I thought that this was, this was uh, 25 years ago, I guess. I, I don't know why I thought it was funny, but um, uh, at breakfast that morning, I said, did you see those guys over there? kneeling at their beds this morning, didn't it? What, kind of weird. And everybody stopped and kind of looked at me where they're all eating breakfast and they, everybody just kind of sets their fork down and they're kind of looking at me. And I said, I, I'd be embarrassed to do that. And then one by one, these guys got up and walked away from me. Chris, the that bastard, he was right next to me and he got up and left and he walked out. And so I, I was thinking, you know, what, what did I say? And I, I was just trying to be funny. In retrospect, it wasn't funny. It wasn't even entertaining. I don't even know why I even said it. But anyway, Mark Houston was sitting right across from me and he looked at me and he said, Myers, I'm confused. You've been in these rooms now, what, eight, nine years? And I went, yeah. And he said, you're, what's your prayer life like? What, what step 11 look like? And, and guys, I, I really, I didn't know how to answer him. And I just said, you know, probably not what it should be. And he said, I, I would say that. I, I would say that. And I, I said, I, I'm, I'm concerned because it, it seems to me that if we looked really close, we would see your hand on the tiller all the time, wouldn't we? And I said, compared to what? 
and and he goes, well, maybe God's hand could be on that tiller some. And I went, uh, maybe, I, I guess, uh, yeah. Anyway, he said, maybe you ought to try a few things and, and I'll, give you, I'll give you some ideas about what to do. And he did. I, I, I'll, I'm always indebted to the cat because he stayed there um, when everybody else left. And, and the next morning I got up real early, like 4 a.m. because I didn't want anybody to see me. Um, and um, I, I got on my knees for the first time ever, probably. I got on my knees and, and, and prayed. And I got to tell you something, guys. I, I got up, went to the shower, cleaned up, got, got back in, and uh, I walked around the corner into that breakfast. We're now a full day off of my debacle. And I walked into that breakfast hall, and uh, Mark Houston's looking at me. I don't know if any of you guys remember Mark's laugh, but Mark would throw his head back and just ha this, this, this really deep voice like that and just laugh like this. And I said, I, I didn't say anything funny. And he said, you didn't need to say anything. All I did was look at the way you looked at me when you walked around that corner. Something happened, didn't it? And I went, it did. And he said, I told you, I told you. And that started it. That started the, the recognition. Um, I remember somebody a lot wiser than me one time saying, things in AA, are, they're not a problem if you can see them. You have to see them first. And that's the reason why the steps themselves were so amazingly transformational because we, it put us in a position to where we would stop uh, with all of the, the, the game plan and the rationalization and the, and the justifying crazy stuff. I mean, listen, how many of y'all men and women both in the rooms, how many of you guys have ever rationalized or justified really, really, really crazy stuff until you finally stopped and recognized it and then you went, oh my gosh, I, I'm mortified. I just, I can't believe I was that guy. Um, it's, a, it's a game changer for a whole, a whole lot of us. Um, one of the most reoccurring themes in the, in the text is this idea of a relationship with our creator. Um, it, it just, it, it's amazing how many times, one of, this is one of the reasons why I love books studies so much. Um, I, I truly love them. Um, they never get old for me because I keep seeing things that I never saw before. But one of the things that really caught me off guard one time was how many reoccurring themes there are in the big book. Uh, this reoccurring theme of work and self-sacrifice for others. This reoccurring idea of a relationship with our creator. Um, from way back when Bill is, is talking to Ebby and he's laying in the hospital all busted up. And um, I want to read you a little, a little piece. Um, there it is. There it is. Y'all ever pick up your book and you've got so much stuff falling out of your book that you can't even, it's crazy. And I scold people for that all the time. I said, quit putting so much crap in your book, man. It causes them to fall apart like that. The, uh, um, this idea, there it is. Um, he's, in the, he's in the hospital. I was to test my thinking by the new God consciousness within. Common sense would thus become uncommon sense. I was to sit quietly when in doubt, asking only for direction and strength to meet my problems as they would have me. Never was I to pray for myself, except as my request bore on my usefulness to others, then only might I expect to receive, but that would be in great measure. And then this little cool piece underneath it. My friend promised when these things were done, I would enter upon a new relationship with my creator, that I would have the elements of a way of living which answered all my problems, not just the booze problems or the dope problem, all my problems. Belief in the power of God plus enough willingness, honesty, and humility to establish and maintain the new order of things were the essential requirements and then they repeat it again and again. And it was important enough that Bill Wilson decided to write a whole chapter on this idea. Um, if, you, if you look back on 50, uh, 59 and 60, Bill starts sh showing us the steps written out that way. And they talk about the powerlessness in step one. And then they talk about the, uh, finding the power in step two. And then the rest of the steps were how we got that power. Now, now, the part that got me about it was I thought it was a one and done kind of thing. 
You find the power and there it is, bam. And then you just simply day by day, you, so, you just kind of float into God's arms. That's what I thought it was. And the reality of it was, is that it's not like that. There, there is a current. Unfortunately, the current's flowing the other direction. And unless you do something to stay there, you will do what millions of us have done. You will simply float farther and farther away from this amazing relationship with God until pretty soon you're out there um, clinging on to this thing called sobriety, completely ignoring this thing called recovery, completely ignoring it. Um, and then we just find ourselves in a situation where one day we're so power, powder dry, we're, we're saying unkind things to people, we're doing unkind things, we're acting like a total petulant child, Maybe I'm the only one that ever did that, guys, but it's, a, it's an amazing thing to watch your attitude and watch how you manifest to others um, after you've been sober for a while. Um, it, it, it's, it's crazy. I, I, guys, I, I'm, I'm a, from the school that believed 100% that everything would change and everything would be better forever as long as I just stayed clear of the booze. I was going to be okay. Canadian whiskey was my problem. And, and you rascals made some fine stuff and I drank most of it. Um, and so I, I just, um, and I thought if I get rid of that, I'm going to be okay. But imagine your own situation plus the situation of the men and women that you sponsor. How many of us have run across that same thing? These wide-eyed looks from people who looking at us going, Myers, I've been sober for 10 years. Why am I like this? It's, it's real simple, Hoss. You, you stop doing the things that you did in the early days um, and your, your life has gotten um, uh, goofy again. How many of you guys ever remember, uh, maybe I was the only guy that was surprised at reading uh, the ABCs and from ABCs over to the third step prayer. There's two and a half pages there. Bill introduces us to this idea that maybe there's something going on besides the booze. And then he, inter he introduces this idea that selfishness and self-centeredness, that was, we think is the root of our problem. So stick with me for two seconds. I'm almost done with this part of this and we can get on to some good stuff. That, that the, if selfishness and self-centeredness is my problem, then how do I get rid of selfishness? I had, um, um, I've told this story several times. I had this, this, um, uh, I had this um, com this breakfast with with Joe McQuaney and Cliff Bishop, my my early sponsor for twenty some odd years, and and uh, and Joe McQuaney of Joe and Charlie, and and Joe was asked asked me at this breakfast. He said, "Myers, let me ask you something, buddy." He said, "Do you think that you can exert more willpower to overcome your own willpower?" And I said, "Yes, sir." I said, "I think that's the key." And I remember him looking at Clifford, and he he goes how do you do this Cliff? And, and, and I laughed cause I, I just, he was trying to jab at me, but he was, he was, I don't know how Cliff did it either. Cause I always said the wrong thing always. Um, but he, what he was saying was, was that, um, that that's not the ticket that you can't, you can't fix willpower. You can't fix that by exerting more willpower. It's just simply not going to work. The only ticket uh, the only thing that ever seemed to really work is this relationship with God. And so the next question becomes, how do we get from point A, busted up drunk, to um, um, a guy that's got a relationship with God? Well, part of the help is to look at, 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 um, um, look at, at Bill Wilson and his experience. Uh, look at the way he talks about God in the early part of, of, of his story in the front of the book. He's hugely contemptuous of anything that looks like God or anything spiritual or this kind of stuff. And this same man has this experience some period later, some short period later in the hospital that knocked his little socks off. I mean, literally, I read a story one time where the socks flew straight off. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. That didn't, that didn't happen. I, but it sounded pretty good anyway. It's just like he just it, 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 it rocked his world and and he ch began to change. And the cool part about it, the stuff that I thought was fantastic, was that a few short years later, 
here is this train wreck joined at the hip with a couple of other train wrecks, and they're going to write one of the coolest spiritual pieces ever written, that little piece where they talk about step 11. This, this stuff is, is huge. Um, the, the, the fact that, that Bill Wilson was able to put this stuff together at the bottom of 85 and, and 86 and 87, the fact that he was able to put this together based on where he had come from is a miracle even in itself. Um, any, any of you guys and gals, y'all ever read Brennan Manning? Y'all ever read him? Uh, he, Brennan Manning was a, a kind of a, a Catholic rogue. Um, they, depending on, he was also an alcoholic. Um, and depending on where he was in his, in his alcoholism, the church either loved him to death or just wanted him to go away. He was just a pain in the butt. And, but he wrote some amazing stuff. And because he had experience in AA, he used to talk glowingly about the program of Alcoholics Anonymous, which is, I always love it when clergy um, um, read this stuff and see the wisdom of approaching it this way. Guys, I don't know about y'all, but if, if this had been written any other way than 85, 86, and 87, if this had been written any other way, I wouldn't have listened to it ever. I wouldn't, because I'm as contemptuous as Bill Wilson was. This stuff all came from left field and I would not have moved towards it and, and even given it a chance. Um, and, and Bill knew that. And it was because he wrote it the way that he did um, that, that had a door that was so wide open that you'd be crazy not to walk through it. You'd be crazy not to go there. It was just, it made it so easy to um, uh, just move towards it. And once you move towards it, it's like, how many of y'all remember the first time you ever saw God and you're, and you're just walking around? I mean, it's like I have an, an experience with my creator and now I can't unsee my creator. I see him in, in plants. I see him in clouds. I see him when I'm running. I see him in your faces. I see, I cannot unsee him. He's, he's there. Um, and it's so real that you just go like, holy cow, how do I? I want, I want more always. I, I, I want to move towards that stuff um, in a, in a profound way. The, um, okay, I need to hurry. Um, I was in a meeting one night um, and there was a kid in there that was about, he couldn't have been 19 or 20, real young guy. And he said, he said, I want to, I want to, if I could, if could just take a minute here in this meeting tonight, I want to tell you something that my sponsor told me this morning. We have a quiet time in this halfway house where I'm living. And um, he, this morning he said something that I thought was pretty funny, but I also later in the day figured it was pretty profound and everybody in the room's going, bring it. Come on, we're, Hoss, we're almost out the door anyway. So go ahead. And he said, he asked me to, 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 to look at it like this. He said, if God was your girlfriend, would she be upset with how much time you spent with her? And I, I laughed. I mean, out loud, I laughed at the, at the deal. And I went, I went, that's the stupidest thing. And then a little bit later, I went, yeah, I don't know. Um, but the reality of this stuff is, guys, the, 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 our time with our creator uh, is huge. The book is clear. Our experience collectively is painfully clear. I mean, it's there's no there's no weirdness to that. We 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 know that just anecdotally from watching each other's experience like that. What I find amazing is how often we trivialize that stuff. Mark asked me one time. He said, "Mars, how much time do you spend with God every day?" And I said, um, "I don't spend uh, time with God every day." And he said, "When you do spend time with God, how much time do you spend with Him?" And I said, "I don't know." A couple of minutes and he said like maybe when you're leaving the house and I went yeah yeah like that when I'm back in my pickup out of the driveway I'll say God help me today that I, I don't do something stupid he said that's it right really and I went yeah I, I'm he said Myers I'm just trying to get you some perspective on this kind of stuff he said why why is it that you don't want to move closer to God and I said it's, it's not necessarily that I just don't really know what to do and he said do you ever have quiet time and I said, I'm being real transparent with you, okay? Some of this is kind of embarrassing. 
because I, I, I told him, I said, I don't have quiet time because it makes me embarrassed um, to do it. And he goes, Myers, you, what, are you just playing the man card? Or I don't understand. Why do you, why would you think it's embarrassing? And I said, it's just, I don't feel, I mean, okay, point made. And he said, well, I hope so. Uh, because unless you can figure out a way to spend more time with God, you're going to have a real um, flat uh, relationship in these rooms and it's going to get drier and drier until eventually you're going to go, is this all there is? And you, you don't want to be here anymore. And, and at the time, again, I don't understand it, but then uh, uh, I got to where I, I did understand it. Um, we we re really want to, um, we really want to set aside when we're doing this and when we're teaching this. I can't talk about 11th step stuff without talking about uh, sponsorship and how we look at this kind of stuff. Um, the book is clear on awakening. Um, uh, when we go to bed at night, um, it, I, I don't want to get into the directions on that because the directions are right there. You just got to read them. The, it's not so much that it, this other stuff is, um, my job is to, if I, if I was so fortunate to sponsor Allie, my job to, is to tell Allie the truth. And one of the things that I would need to tell Allie is let's be really, really open with each other about what our relationship with our creator looks like. I don't, I don't, we don't want uh, um, superficial, goofy stuff going on. We want real live, intimate, a relationship. Um, and most of us have figured that out. As we move towards God, things get deeper and, and richer. And all of a sudden I've been realized that my ability to do crazy things that I swore I would never do, like sponsorship, like working with others, can you guys imagine, can you all imagine what a train wreck it would be if Bill Wilson had wrote step 12 in place of step 11 and put 11 on the other side of that like that? We're going to work with others before we have a relationship with God. Can you imagine how self-driven that nightmare would be? They would, this would be called train wrecks anonymous. I, I, I promise you. Um, the, 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 the cool part about this stuff is, is that the very thing that I said I would never, ever do which is work with other people because it scares the spit out of me. The one thing I said I'd never do, I found myself unable to stay away from. And it became woven into the most amazing fabric of my life. My day is full of phone conversations and, and, and dealing with folks and trying to help folks. And, um, and it's changed everything about my life. And the cool part about that stuff is that my family tends to dig me these days. My, my wife doesn't run or she doesn't walk in the other room. When I walk in the room, we can actually be in this. I know it's going to be a shock. I know it's a surprise. We can actually be in the same room at the same time. It, I know it shocks me too. Um, it, it's the, it's the coolest thing. Um, there was a, let me make a couple of fast suggestions and then we can talk about some other stuff like that. Um, um, because I think it takes courage to sometimes move towards something that we don't fully understand. And so it, if I say, if somebody says, um, uh, if I go, Allie, I want you to have a relationship with God. Um, and so I want you to just go uh, uh, do that. Well, he might or he might not, depending on, on what he's willing to do. And some people have, have different abilities to move that way. And so um, let me, I just want to make a couple of suggestions. And some of this stuff is so stupid that you'll just go, that's so stupid. Um, but but I, I just, it'll give you an idea of kind of what we're talking about on this. Um, one of the things, believe it or not, that finally helped me slow down was a little app called Insight Timer. Uh, some of you guys have seen it. Uh, some of you have it on your phone right now. It's a little free app. You can buy a, a, a one that costs money. I just took a little free app on it like this. And it's just meditation stuff. Um, I practiced yoga for years and, and uh, it kind of made me think back about that. But, but it's not real heavy stuff. I mean, I guess you could dig around and find some heavy stuff. But I mean, there's little three minute meditations, four minute, five minute meditations. But you will shut your head up. Guys, I, I, you, if your head's like mine, I mean, my head is like a train station all the time. I've got stuff coming in, stuff going out, and I just, Barefoot Bill in New York one time said, Myers, you, you have a train station head, but you feel like you've got to get on every train that comes in. And I went, you're 
absolutely right. I, I completely am that guy. Um, and so this little insight timer um, helped me understand uh, that I could be still for a little while. And buddy, I'm telling you, it got to be magic sitting still for 15 or 20 minutes and, and just chilling. Um, and the little app helped. Another thing that was a kind of transformational for me, there was a, um, how many of y'all have like 15 daily readers? Uh, maybe 20 of them. They're, you probably have them waist high at your house. So they're just like, um, there's a jillion of them out there. Um, years ago, they produced one called In God's Care. Um, and uh, it was written by, I think it was written by a couple of gals and they, I, I just love it. I, I'm telling you guys, I've read all these other ones like that and God's care is available online. You can do it and get an actual paper book. And um, it, it's amazing. It seems that it connects with me in a way that, um, that no other daily reader um, um, uh has it and I just it's just it's pretty amazing there's another piece of literature out there that my buddy uh 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 Mike gave uh trying to turn me on to it's called the way of serenity how many of you guys have ever heard um the serenity prayer anybody in that room tonight that okay maybe how many of you are so tired of hearing the serenity prayer that you want to scream sometimes? I mean, we just do it for 33 years and you'll be wanting to like go, please hurry, please hurry. I just, this little book called The Way of Serenity was, was one of those books that um, took the serenity prayer and um, made me see what it was really about. In a way, it, it's written in really small chapters. The each chapter, there's like 25 chapters, I think. And each chapter you can read in a morning. It's, it's no big deal at all like that, but, but it's, it's really, really, it'll, it'll, now it makes me, uh, so where I'm so emotional that when we say the serenity prayer, um, I get emotional, um, uh, because it means something now instead of just something a whole bunch of people, um, uh, said, um, the other thing that let me I would like to suggest is is if you struggle with um, uh, eleventh step stuff with with prayer and meditation and and uh, getting your day started with this stuff sometimes the key is just going outside. Now I know that some of you are just shaking your head going that's the stupidest thing next to the other stupid thing he just said that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Um, but the, but sometimes guys there's this there's something about being outside that settles me down and centers me in a way um, that uh, I can sit out there. I've got a little special place outside that I sit and it's, uh, it's, just, um, it's just special because I sit there every day. It's just, it's nice. I like to be there like that. But, but something about being outside uh, makes it so much easier for me to uh, kind of get my head wrapped around um, uh, some of this stuff. Um, Let me mention one more real quick thing and then I'll get out of here. It's a real, real quick deal. Um, I, I am in your own experience and in the experience of the men and women that you sponsor, getting folks to move towards uh, a relationship with their creator is a game changer. It changes their program. It changes their, their way they look at sobriety. It changes their uh, ability to look at life without all the anxiety and the angst and the fears that we carry into this stuff. Um, it's, a, it's sort of an amazing deal. But some of us have had uh, so much trouble in the beginning getting moved towards a, a relationship with God that um, um, I have a a, a guy that I met one time that was struggling so much with this whole thing. He was just not ever going to get it. Um, and I asked him one time, I said, buddy, can you just go slow and move towards something that's, that's bigger than you? And he said, there's nothing out there bigger than me. And then he goes, well, maybe I'll tell you about it tomorrow. And the next day when I saw him, he said, uh, he said, uh, I, I think I've got my idea of God. And I said, what is that? And he said, it's Thor. And I remember I went, you're sore? And he goes, no, 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 Thor. I said, hammer guy, that guy? And he goes, yeah. Now listen, I, there, I could have gone, oh, come on, man. That's not, come on, that's crazy. Don't do that. And, but I just said, rock on, let's see what happens. And uh, I'm telling you, this kid was in treatment and he 
he was like a little walking miracle. He changed and he changed and he changed. When he left treatment, I knew he was going to be okay. He was so plugged in that it wasn't even funny. And I, I, I saw him a month or two later and I said, I said, dude, how's Thor? He goes, Thor is badass. It, everything is going great. And I said, okay, cool. I saw him about six months later and I said, how's, how's Thor? And he goes, oh, buddy, check this out. And he took his shirt off and he pulled everything back like this. And he had a, he had a tattoo of Thor on his back with his arm coming around with this big hammer across his chest. And I went, dang, that's, that's pretty special. Now, listen, the reason I'm telling you this story is I saw him about three months later at a, at a, at a, a treatment center deal. And, um, and I said, you all right? And he said, I couldn't be better. I said, how's Thor? And he goes, Thor's okay. And I said, uh oh, it sounds a little funny. And he goes, no, I just realized the other day, though, that I've kind of moved on. Thor's not big enough. And I went, right? And he goes, yeah. Yeah. About a year later, he sent me this picture and I couldn't, I couldn't read it. I couldn't see what it was. And I, I asked Londa to biggerize it for me. She's my technical whiz. And so she biggerized it and I looked at it and um, uh, he's standing next to some glass with water in it. And I said, dude, where are you? Where are you? And he said, oh, I just got baptized. And I went, no kidding. And he said, yeah, he said, it's, it's, it's amazing how far this thing has come. And I went, yeah, I know. Guys, listen, the reason I'm telling you this crazy story, where you start is not nearly as important to me as where you end up. If you want a life that's transformed, if you want a life that's completely different, quit playing games and writing this 11th step off as, as, as if it's optional. It is. It's only optional if you want a bleak, stale, one day at a time, goofy um, um, sobriety. If you want to understand what true recovery looks like, the key is a relationship with God. That's all I got, guys. Thanks.